Hello everyone, I'm Xiaobo Chen. I'm a research fellow at Center for Environment and Sustainability in University of Surrey. And today I'm happy to share our work about how to select the data of good quality using a practical tool named the pedigree matrix. The first thing I want to show you is the importance of data in sustainable business. The figure on your left shows the parameter about how data can be managed for making the decision. We can see that the raw data is progressively treated to be more descriptive information and applicable knowledge than it will be used by the decision makers, based on which the decision makers can better understand and act on environmental impact involved in all the business operations so that the data is heavily linked to the business activities and plays a fundamental role for the success of sustainability. Therefore, how to use and improve the quality of data is the core issue in our current PlayDis project, which means we need to guarantee that the data can well represent the real situation and the data should be precise and accurate as much as possible to enhance the decision maker's confidence when they rely on such information to make the reasonable decisions. In this study, we introduced the concept of pedigree. As its name implies, it refers to the background information of the data by which we can guarantee the quality of the data. The traditional pedigree matrix is commonly used to evaluate and report the data quality. For example, given a targeted data, its quality can be evaluated from five aspects reliability, completeness, temporal, geographical, and technological representativeness. Then, an expert uses the scaling method to generate the quality indicator, which represents the quality level of the data. However, we think this method is a posterior evaluation because it is done after the use of the data, but nothing to do with the selection of more appropriate data. The question here is about how to select the right data at the right place. To solve this problem, I give you an improved pedigree matrix that can support the data selection process before its utilization. We switch the order of the previous pedigree flow and use the five quality aspects as the metadata to describe the data we are looking for. Then the data quality indicator can be considered as a data filter, serves to find the best fitted data among the different data sources, so that the pedigree matrix becomes a data selector rather than a data evaluator. This figure explains more specifically the process for data selection using pedigree matrix. Given the different data sources, we create reference rules to attribute a score for each quality aspect. Then we aggregate the score into a single data quality indicator, which can be ranked from poor quality to good quality. So according to the ranking order, the user can choose data of good quality. In this slide, I'm going to show you how this method works in a hypothetical use case. We create a view of materials, including a list of materials data, and we want to use this view of materials to estimate the environmental impact in the manufacturing process. However, this slide only shows you the data selection process of one single material, aluminium, as an example. The green table is the data we are looking for. Since we suppose have no direct measurement data, we need to find a surrogate data to represent it. Then the blue table lists the potential data sources we can use, and the metadata are provided to rank their quality levels using the pedigree matrix. The orange table shows the attribution of the quality score for each aspect according to the reference rules and the data quality indicators are calculated for the three sources. As the result shows, 
we can find the appropriate data source for aluminum in our use case. We can do the same work for selecting other materials data in the list. So far, I showed the utilization of data quality indicator as a quality selector. To extend, it can also be used as an uncertainty factor for quantitative assessment. In this case, for example, we convert the DQR as the parameters of the probability distribution to represent the uncertainty of data and use the Monte Carlo simulation to propagate the uncertainty. We also apply sensitivity analysis to identify which data point has the most influence on overall uncertainty. Then we represent the result in this four category matrix. You can see that the data of aluminum is projected in the yellow cadre on the right bottom, which means although its uncertainty is relatively high, the data of aluminum has few influence on overall uncertainty. By this way of communication, the decision maker has a direct vision about how to reduce the uncertainty effectively by focusing on the uncertainty hotspot which is the data of titanium alloy in this case, because it has the higher uncertainty and higher sensibility. In conclusion, we enhance the use of pedigree metrics from a data evaluator to a practical data selector, and there are four main advantages of this method. First, it is cost effective because it can help the users to reduce the time for building data inventory. Second, we specify the metadata that is easy to be collected by the users and create a user-friendly tool as a data filter. Third, we create reference rules to attribute the data quality score, which award too much subjectivity among judges. As people follow the same standard rules, a consistent and comparative result can be generated. Finally, the extension of data quality indicator to quantitative assessment can enhance the knowledge improvement, which is more interesting for the decision makers. Here is all about what I want to share today. And if you have interest in our work or the whole Play this project regarding sustainability in aerospace industry, please feel free to visit our website for more information. And thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, please.